Continuing to follow the latest on that bridge collapse in Baltimore. The bodies of two men, 35 and 26 years old, were recovered today. Divers found them inside a red pickup submerged about 25 feet of water near the bridge's middle span. Four others are presumed dead. We're expected to learn more from the NTSB tonight at 8. But we know the agency has recovered the ship's voyage recorder data. And given that the Port of Baltimore is still closed, questions are circulating now about how this all could impact the supply chain. It's been a leading port for automobiles for 13 years, and it's the ninth biggest based on the value of the cargo that goes there. In terms of size, it's the 11th largest. NBC Connecticut's Kyle Jones spoke to retail experts about how all this shipping and it being halted can affect shoppers. Retail experts say there's still a lot of uncertainty about what the port closure in Baltimore means for the supply chain. And how are the other ports, such as New York, New Jersey, Norfolk, Savannah, how are those ports not going to be impacted because of the diversions we're going to see? Questions that don't have answers just yet as people still try to grasp the severity of what happened in Baltimore and its impacts on the economy. Everybody who was buying cars, for everybody who was buying farm equipment, we're the largest port in the country that does that. So this is not just impacting Maryland. Here in Connecticut, products sold in stores that are shipped can come through any of those East Coast ports. We have to assess exactly, you know, what, how much of our uh, retail product was included in there um, before we can make a general um, sort of prediction as to you know how this will get rerouted, where it'll get rerouted to. It will take some time to figure out the supply chain fixes, which over time could lead to higher prices and delays the longer that the port is closed. I think we're kind of painted in a corner that we really don't have a choice but to pay a little bit more. And some say they're not too worried about what impacts, if any, may head our way. I feel like it would mostly be a temporary setback, in all honesty. In New Haven, Kyle Jones, NBC Connecticut News. And while what happened in Baltimore is very rare and very unlikely here in our state, bridge safety is still something Connecticut should be working on right now. That's because of a 2022 report card we got from the American Society, Society of Civil Engineers. That's actually an improvement, though. They gave us a grade of C, which is an improvement, though, over our previous grade. So 2018, we got the grade, which is C minus, but now it's C. And then in between 50 states, we are 24s which is not a good one, I think. Therefore, there are a lot of rooms to improve the infrastructures. Now, according to the report card from those engineers, age is a big part of our issue. Connecticut has some of the oldest infrastructure in the country, with much of it 50 years or older, and it's going beyond its intended life. That's Professor Young Moon Sun, who you just heard from there. He also says while the infrastructure is aging, our modes of transportation are getting much heavier. The ships are getting bigger and wider and then heavier these days. And then even the vehicles too, the cars, electric cars, is way much heavier than before. And then even the size has been increased over the years. Therefore, yes, not only because we got the C, C grade 2022, but also everything is about heavier and then larger. Now, Professor Sun says there are a lot of ways we can improve durability. For example, providing more redundancies make it thicker, make it wider, or providing a special joint. And while the professor says those improvements are needed, they take time and a lot of money. That's why he also believes more needs to be done to improve ship safety as well. Maybe prevent that kind of damages to the bridges will be the best way. So maybe controlling the ship properly and then provide more uh, maybe rigorous regulations about the, uh, the ship maintenance, something like that. Professor stresses that what happened in Baltimore is really, really rare. Stay with NBC Connecticut and NBC News for continuing coverage of the Baltimore Bridge collapse. You can find the latest updates on NBCConnecticut.com and the free NBC Connecticut app.